Today I'll be installing real glass windows with frames from the dollar store for my 1-6 scale diorama. Let's go. Alright, this is what I have. I have these frames. I have my panels. I hope you checked out the last video about the construction of the box room corners. That is what we're going to work with, but this is the most important stage, the stage that I wanted uh, to do the most. What I've been missing was windows. Now, I cannot reiterate enough how important it is that you choose the kind of windows that is your style. I chose, this is my prototype, so this is what we will be constructing today, except on, um, on one of the corner units where the measurements will be a little bit different. I'll explain that in a minute. But you might like windows. This is a built-in window. Like if you go and you find a really cheap frame and this is more your style of a window, then go for that. I wanted really long windows and I went looking for just, the, I don't know, just the glass. But I stumbled upon these metal frames which were beyond what I could even imagine. So they're functioning, opening loft windows and uh, that's what we will be building today, front and back. Notice that I do work on an angle here when I do the front, but I kind of sometimes regret that I didn't do these butt joints instead. This would have been probably a lot easier to construct. However, I do have this done on the other opposite side and I do plan on using the back sides of these walls that I'm building for optional dioramas. The plan for the very back wall of my diorama is to have one, two, three segments. This one overlaps. I explained this more in the other two videos that I've already created. Put down a floor panel for measurement. And then I'm going to put in this. Now what I'm doing right now is I have to find the center of this area for this wall. Because I'm putting three windows on my back wall. That's what, that's what I want to do. My main unit I based all on, I mean I spoke about this before, I centered everything. You can go back and watch the previous two videos if you want more detail. I took two of the frames, I stuck them in the center of this board, and then I built around it. All of the stuff was based on how these fit on the board, so I knew how much baseboard and top moldings and side moldings that I wanted to use. And we are going to do the same here, but because there is an overlap and I am using some of, I am overlapping some of this wall, so it's going to be a shorter wall than this wall is, because it overlaps, I am, I have to measure what this is and then center the new, this is the cutout area, so I can use this as a guide but I can also use the two new picture frames as a guide too. But I do have to find what the center point of this is. And that will be easy to do if I just measure from here to here. It is exactly 11 inches. How awesome is that? So it seems that I've used exactly one inch. And that is true on each side. So that's going to make all of this super easy for measuring. So this is a 12 inch wall. This is an 11 inch wall. This is an 11 inch wall. Let's measure and cut. So when I went looking for these frames, I was just, I had decided that I was just gonna get any frame, I was gonna find the cheapest frame possible that had real glass inside. It was important to me that it was real glass. I mean, it probably shouldn't be real glass. You can use box packaging. You can do everything that I'm doing here today and not make the window open a bowl. You can just build popsicle stick frames or any kind of wood, any small kind of work balsa wood or any kind of crafting wood. 
You can build the frames of the windows and put in plastic packaging, which is, again, something I should probably do because I am so clumsy. But, so I wanted to have real wood, real frames, make it as au natural and realistic as possible. And so I wasn't just looking for glass. I was quite surprised to find uh, these frames at the Dollar Tree. And they instantly gave me this loft window idea, swinging hinged window, um, to my surprise. And I mean, it shouldn't have been a surprise at all because how transparent frames like this work is that there's two pieces of glass. So I am given an initial one. I don't use both pieces of glass. I mean, I could. I could press them together and even put sticks in between and put make more detail, cross detail. But at least for now, I'm going to keep them opening. My idea was actually to make functioning doors and windows, and I think I still might do that. Uh, I was going to build the popsicle sticks frames around these and then inset them and then maybe put them on hinges this way in some way and make some kind of French windows, French doors. And I still think I am going to do that for the center part. But again, luckily, I have an extra piece of glass per window and uh, what I do is I just take out one of the pieces and then I'll, I'll bend these tabs back in and voila I have a, a window pane and then I'm going to bend this wire and use it as I don't know, what did I do with my prototype which I, I don't even I don't even have to call this a prototype because it worked out perfectly. Yeah, so I'm going to use of that those metal bars to put across and create the hinge. And I'll show you how that's done when we get to that part. So you do build the frame around it. And like I said, you could just build the frame around a hole in the wall and uh, put in a piece of plastic in behind or not. Don't put anything at all. You don't even need, I guess, the glare as much as people don't want glare and photo ph photographs in real life, when you're doing it in diorama, the glare makes the picture look real. It adds truth to your dioramas. Taking these wire off, because we have to bend that to the new shape, and then taking out a piece of glass, storing these two pieces of glass later for other projects or other windows or doors that we make and then putting this inside and we will use these two new windows to measure the frame that we need love my floors love my windows love that they're in gold these came in silver too so that would be an option for you uh, i wanted everything to be olden days brass why i chose the brass color gold color so, we know that this is 11 inches across, and the frames themselves are, they're exactly 4 inches across, and then whatever the length of them this way is, which they measure exactly 12 inches, so that's really cool that the dimensions of these frames are exactly what they are. I mean, it would be bad for if you were putting a a picture in your frame because you probably have to cut it down but I guess that's why they're at the dollar store however works out perfect for me what do they say they say that they're four by six but on the outside of the frame I'm measuring four by six so I am so happy about that so I'm leaving one inch for the overlay and then three 0.5 inches until the window starts and then on this side is another three and a half inches so that makes it centered minus this one inch right here that's what we want so I will and then I'm down exactly two inches here and that might it might have to be a little free with our measurements because not everything is perfect in architecture land. The walls aren't perfectly square, the windows aren't perfectly square, but you make allowances. 
and I will do that on the bottom side too. It's a little short, so you kind of have to move things up a little bit. And then I will roughly mark that here. Basically, you can just trace the frames you're using and that is what I will do. And then after I roughly have it marked, hopefully you can see the marks. I usually go much lighter than that so it can be erased easier. Then I will double check the measurements and uh, maybe give it a just a, a smidge more so that there's no problem but uh, you can always sand away if you need extra room for the window over here is oh, exactly four and a half because that's what we want it to be four and a half on this side three and a half on this side and it measures about exactly four inches there and exactly four inches here and then hopefully exactly 12 inches here I like to put the windows in the square too and center them after the exact measurements are in there and then see if you can center it on all sides and then trace around the windows themselves too because the windows aren't perfect and then after I'm done with all this I will have a few different lines here, but I will make sure that I cut along the outermost so that we'll be sure that the windows can fit in. Now I'm going to take the blade and I'm going to cut the window out. And maybe I should have done it on the back side. Well, I don't know. So that it could lay flat. But I think this will work in and actually I won't cut anything underneath so this is probably the best surface. This square metal ruler is going to come in handy. I tried cutting with plastic ones and the blade cut the plastic so a metal ruler is definitely the way to go here. This is exactly 12 inches and this is exactly 12 inches so that's how we're going to do it. And I'm just going to score this over and over. I never knew how I was going to cut through these boards, but this actually does work. Just take your time and score slowly. And you'll eventually go through. And you just keep cutting and cutting until it goes through. And don't be like me. Put a protective surface down. I have my nice cutting board floors that I love to use. But maybe I'll never want to use them again once I have this diorama finished. However, I still need them for a platform. But yeah, put a protective surface. I don't have one of those green mats. I definitely <laughs> need to get one of those giant crafting mats. But actually, once you make a groove, the mat knife kind of stays within that groove. But you don't want to go off too much. The metal ruler's not really doing anything right now. But I have it there just in case just to be careful 
Oh. And luckily I do have a one inch frame going all around so even if I do slip a little bit, which I have, uh, it is going to be covered. A little scratch will be covered. I'm trying to make sure that I'm recording at the exact time where the square falls out. But I guess with everything slow, steady, light, patience is probably best. And I would say it's probably better to cut downward from your main surface because you're going to have less tearing than you can get on the back side. I don't know, let's see. We have, you see you do have some tears here, hopefully, I don't know if you can see that or not. Not everything's white and probably washed out. But not that that's going to really matter with this project because we are finishing the inside almost as, or the back side almost as nicely as we are finishing the front side. This is definitely the hardest part of the job, the most scary. Ah, okay. That was the money shot that I wanted. And uh, I can sand this down a little bit later. I usually will do that after I put the popsicle sticks in. But we have one window cut open. And now I think I'm going to do the third window because let's get this horrible task over with. If you guys can think of an, a better tool for cutting through this board precisely, you let me know. But, yeah, we're looking good. One window, two windows. Let me cut out the third right now. And uh, that looks pretty sweet. Okay, so now I have both windows cut out. So my back wall is completely done with, well, <laughs> completely done. We've got a lot of ways to go, but this was really the hardest part is cutting out of the, but this is, this is gonna be super cool. I love my new floors. I love my new window holes. And uh, let's uh, lay down some popsicle sticks now. Framing. Oh no, I put a huge slice in my floor. I guess I should have been, I should have been careful. I don't know how I'm going to show you this step. I'm going to have to build up some kind of platform work area so that we have a solid surface to work on. So now that we have the frame here, I am going to put the frames into the holes and this is the floor right here and this is the top so I want these actually to go this way but you want them to be bottom heavy I mean if you're using this whole hinge feature I'm just showing you what I'm doing the shorter distance has to be at the top of the window and the longer distance at the bottom of the window so that they are bottom heavy and that they will stay into place better and now I am just going to, just like in the prototype, I am going to build up this frame around them. So what I do is I take the wire that came with the frame. And I want to be careful about this because it can break. I want to bend it straight. And then I can use those two little corners at the edge of the window. And then I want to measure just enough on the outside the width of a popsicle stick because that is what's going to go outside the frame. And then I'm going to grab some snips and cut off 
some extra. This is very cheap metal. So it does cut easy. I'm going to groove it and then bend it and hopefully it breaks on the groove. You only have to, it's very, very brittle, but once you do the cut, just a little, uh, a little notch in it should do the trick. Oh, the gist of this is that you're going to put the metal through here and then you're going to build the frame. I don't think these are the these are the scissors that I want to use for this, but just this one cut. Okay. Then you want to build the first layer of the frame around here, leaving a little space for the crossbars so that you can glue the bar into place. And I will glue the next layer. We're going to do a couple layers over top and then it's going to be really secured into place. Okay, so I edged out the first frame, just butting these up against the window, squeezed into the place, and leaving the little notches in the place where the wires will go. And now, well, I have to push these down out of the window. But I like that tight fit that I've created. But now I'm gonna push these down and put another layer of popsicle sticks. I'm going to build that around just by cutting off the tips and turning them into lumber and building the new frame, the second layer of the frame, and that will be the completed back side of these. So yeah, just strategically placing the new layer so that it covers the hinge parts and the windows now we'll stay in with the pins and they can flap open industrial style. Okay, both of my back sides are completely framed now. So two operating windows or three operating windows now complete. Now on this I could have put some more windows on the sides but I think, let, let's not jump to conclusions. I guess I can always make components later. That's the best part about this, is that you can mix and match and add the different components of the room. This will be the very back wall of the diorama. And it's looking pretty sweet. Now, next step is to frame out these ones with the simple, the simple frames first. The first layer is the thickest popsicle stick, and I will be putting that around by using this square tool, which I have just decided was the best thing ever, and like I talked about, this, I think, in one of the previous videos. I guess it would have been the first one where I was guessing at the corner angle or using a piece of cardboard that I folded or something. But this metal, sturdy, I had the plastic one. I bought a whole math set. But I used it once and I cut it with the scissors when trying to do it. But this is amazing. It's got the flat edge. I love this tool for this. And then putting the corner up against here. I'm actually, I don't know if I made it. I didn't, I'm, I left some of the little turn there. Let's just make that corner extra pointy. Make sure that it's not too up. So drawing the guideline is great. So the scissors that I'm using. 
and then I just use regular scissors to cut this and you can see it's always I think it happens on the right side it starts splitting so it is good to cut to the right I think it's just the way that scissors operate and uh, then I have my perfect right angle to go perfectly with this and something that I discovered is there's just enough room to make it halfway down the window so I can fit exactly two and I wanted to avoid that when I did my prototype because I thought it would be too obvious splitting up the window with the two segments but actually it's probably the window is split into two anyway so what difference does it make and then also most of it gets covered up with the layers of moldings and different sticks and even the gold trim that I've added that hides it too so I am not going to break it up into one two three segments like I did before because I can fit it perfectly with just two so now that I've measured and cut all of these things to fit perfectly I measured from the middle again we already know that this is exactly four inches so that is what the bottom edge has to be and then whatever the top edge ends up to be it probably added an extra inch and a half or two inches but th that's that's irrelevant all I know is this framing is looks great and that is probably the last thing we will do in this video and I'm not sure I'm going to complete that tonight because it is after well into the, oh it's four it's four thirty a.m. it's I did have a nap I did fall asleep but I think that's enough for today for me but it might not be the end for you maybe I'll cut the rest of these no 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 I have to I have to there's lots of things I want to do before I go to bed so well, there we go and I haven't decided if I'm going to put on super narrow moldings on here because there isn't a lot there's not enough space to put on the full square here after all of the trim is on so I don't know if I'm gonna make a really narrow one I don't think so I think it actually that will save me lots of time that I don't have to put molding or these these moldings on the other two panels of the back window and but I will put on the gold trim so and I still don't know how I'm gonna hold this up I think I definitely have to put ceilings on here or build something here I also don't want light to come in through that, that is a whole other story for another day it's coming together really great we have three operational windows loving it so I could be done now <clears throat> if I decided to keep my frames of my windows really simple and everything but I don't think that's going to happen actually I have I still have to do the baseboards and the top moldings and the moldings on the wall and stuff yeah because I mean it looks really good and here's an example of how these rooms are adjustable and look there's a whole walkway here through like amazing but again the base oh actually didn't I didn't I decide that this wasn't going to be the base mode but actually these two are gonna butt together to be the base mode and then I'm going to put something up the center I don't know what it's going to be but okay yeah, before first before we do this let's take an overview maybe I second guess not doing the window frames on the front like this with the squared off opposed to the what do we call this beveled uh a slanted diagonal uh cuts so i did it like that and i did go with the frames here but as you can see in the 
completed version of these it is going to look like this so I think next time I think we've worked enough on this maybe I'll actually finish off the whole window detail you can see that I've done a few layers I did um, some this base layer and then I did a popsicle stick layer and then I did a stir stick layer but I think you know actually I was looking at this I think I do need to add an extra layer in here where I'm going to put the stir stick around the border of the window to add just another little dimension it's going to be a subtle detail but just add another I mean, like it needs more. Now, because the color is so neutral and everything, I mean, it's going to look pretty... It's going to blend in. It's just going to be... And most of the time, I probably... I don't know. It's, it's a backdrop. I don't necessarily going to put even any furniture in the room and sometimes just a beautiful backdrop. And hopefully I can make great light now. Light effects because the light will be shining through the window and it will look beautiful. Uh, we do have to do all this. I think I have decided that I will do more narrow moldings here, but in the same configuration where we do a small and a big one and a small one, they'll just be thinner on these panels and we will uh, repeat that throughout the process. But as I show you up close, I guess I showed you as close as possible the finished window I like when there's grains in my wood, so I always do choose that, even though most of that will be covered up. Actually, that's not going to be covered up, because as you can see in this version, do I like, do I like that, that just these, those columns go up? I do, now that I see this one, I am second guessing all of the ornate details I put in here. But again, I think it's going to vanish and not even be, be really noticeable. I do have, we'll be, we'll be making more of these decorations for later. They are the last things that we put on, but they will be, these embellishments will be added to the windows. So we'll have a back wall of three windows with the same ornate details. And uh, I guess I'm going to need lots of these top borders, which I, I really, really like. I mean, it was it was what I always wanted to do was a castle, so we do have to incorporate these uh, these very very luxurious details in there. So yeah, I'm gonna need to make lots of these gold glue from the. I think I explained that in the first video I made in this series. Gold glue from the dollar store. Am I going to work on the rest of the frames? Today, maybe, I have done other videos on framing, so it's not like I do have to show you, but we'll, we'll find out in the next video anyway, if you will see that I've uh, added these extra layers to these windows or not, but I'm probably going to work on that right now. Uh, yeah, I think so, because I really want to get these rooms done so I can make Halloween rooms and Christmas rooms in this new beautiful Parisian loft. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.